Einen guten Abend zum heutigen Vortrag von Jan de Wilder. Jan de Wilder ist ein flämischer Architekt, äh, hat in Gent Architektur studiert und führt seit 2010 das Büro de Wilder, Fink und de Jeu. Ich hoffe, ich habe es richtig ausgesprochen, Jan. Ja. <lacht> ähm, ich habe ihn kennengelernt eigentlich indirekt, äh, weil er einen Lehrauftrag in Mendrisio bis in Kürze hat und ab nächsten Jahr in, auf der ETH in Zürich. Und äh, dem einen oder anderen ist vielleicht in Österreich das Projekt im Bregenzer Wald in Grumbach unter die, wie soll man sagen, äh, publizistisch vielleicht bekannt geworden, wo eben das Büro Jan de Wilder, Fink, de Lö eine Bushaltestelle gemacht haben. Und Jan ist einer dieser Vertreter der flämischen Architektur, wo man in den letzten Jahren eigentlich mittlerweile sagen kann, es ist eine sehr interessante Bewegung entstanden in, in Belgien. Und äh, er ist gestern aus Lausanne gekommen, fährt morgen in der Früh nach Venedig. Und ich bin sehr froh, dass du heute da bist. Er spricht sehr gut Deutsch, <lacht> versteht auch fast alles, also, äh, aber wird heute den Vortrag auf Englisch halten. Es ist uh, ein, er ist, it's easier for him to speak in English, <lacht> für mich nicht. Ähm, wir sind heute ab Mittags durch die Stadt gegangen und äh, ich habe ihm einige Sachen gezeigt und wie ich jetzt gesehen habe, hat er den Vortrag auch ein bisschen geändert, weil er einige... Impressionen aus Innsbruck eingebaut hat in den Vortrag. Ich danke mal fürs Kommen und wünsche einen schönen, interessanten Abend und thank you very much that you are now here in Innsbruck and thank you for the lecture. Ja, yeah, es ist eine Sto Lecture. <lacht> der Martin Reinisch ist leider aber nicht da, aber es ist eine Sto Lecture. Thanks. Ja, danke. Ja, vielen Dank für Sto. Es ist nicht das erste Mal, dass Sto eine Konferenz von mir hat äh, gehabt. Entschuldige mich, ich wollte nicht in Deutsch sprechen. Ich habe das gelernt, wenn ich äh, 16, 18 Jahre alt war. Das ist nur äh, 30 Jahre <lacht> gelesen und äh, ich praktiziere das nicht mehr alle Tage. Alle Tage. Entschuldige mich für das. Uh, so, I will talk in English. Uh, first of all, thank you for inviting us to be here with you. Uh, Inge and you also sent their greetings. They are not with me and I will happy present the work of us three to you. I sit, um, I had the very nice pleasure to have a walk this afternoon into Innsbruck and I don't think I can imagine me a better guide than Arno to do this and I took some Pictures which are maybe not representing everything as such, but an architect should be an observer. I was really unbelievably amazed by what I've seen this afternoon. I also took some other pictures, but on the other hand, as I said, observing should be one of our main things as architects, see the mountain see the detail or all of a sudden someone had stuck some stuff around this beautiful detail those things we should keep in mind at any time especially the ashtray fulfills the complete composition okay i have quite a trip with you and uh, always when we give a conference, obviously the question comes, what will be the topic or what can be the title? And then we say we will talk about this and about that and so on, to avoid any real position immediately. We will talk about a little bit like nine, ten projects and then some miscellaneous small things and we conclude with three ideas. And if we have time left, I quickly will show you some pictures of projects we will not talk about. So let's start with three of this miscellaneous projects, as I call them, tell, as I name them. 
This is a table that we have made for a former client of us, uh, a project that I will not show, of Le Ballet Cire Labé, a production studio for theatre and dance. And at a certain moment, the client gave us one year after delivery a telephone call and said, we are heading for IKEA as we want to furnish the building further on. But someone said, could we not ask the advice of the architect? As they just called us one week before they wanted to go, it was clear there was no time to design a new table. So we stole the table of our grandma as a design. Secondly, the IKEA is cheap, so we made it in the cheapest plywood possible, spruce. And thirdly also, they, they loved the IKEA as they could demount and mount it again and again. So that's why we screwed the legs of the table out of it, like in a piano, it is usually done. But this is where it's merely about for us. As we at a certain point glued the plywood together in a block and gave it to the craftsman to unveil the beautiful leg of the grandma table, all of a sudden the plywood seems to take over a new nature, a new beauty again. And later on, we had put some branches into the notes, and I will not explain anything about that. Second thing. This is a handrail of Miss van der, Roo, Miss van der Roo's Tugendhat house in Bruno. And I was um, happy to visit the house one week before it was closed down for restoration. Um, and we took some photographs, like today here in Innsbruck, uh, some snapshot photographs on which we framed some observations. And what you see here is a chrome handrail, beautifully made. But throughout the history of the Tukentat House, which is not only an architectural history, but also, I believe, a European history, the rail got damaged. And at a certain point, someone decided to cover the damage with a silver duct tape. We believe there is a beautiness in between. As we were at a certain moment asked by a gallery to deliver some pieces of furniture and objects we were designing in the meanwhile, we designed on that occasion this silver table, we call it. It's a black metal ta table, which is polished by diamond. That's nothing new. And normally then you chrome it. It has a mirror capacity, which is unbelievable, as you can see in the above table, which is just recently unveiled to the open air. But we do not chrome it. We leave that away. That means that quite soon after a while, the table gets rusty. And throughout your whole life, and probably longer than one's life will take, except when you put it in the rain or in the shower, of course, it will get rusty, 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 rusty again. It's our small little protest against sustainable ideas, as also this kind of beautiful beautiness of change is for us part of sustainability. And when you have, of course, a party and you forgot to take away the bottles of wine, beer and whatever, and the next day you do it, you, of course, will be facing this beautiness. Third thing I want to share, this is a photo of San Gotardo at a certain point, August, a certain day, a shiny day and there is not much more to see than just the mountains and the people, cyclists walking around. And one year earlier I took this photograph, which is a completely other circumstance. There is humidity, there is the grayness, and thanks to the conditions, all of a sudden one can see things which you normally do not observe so clearly out. The electricity pile, the statue, the little small chapel and the staircase and the traffic sign. We often show those pictures when we talk with students or people ask us what architecture eventually could be. Then we could say maybe finding this condition that things which have seemingly nothing to do with each other, all of a sudden have something to do with each other. This is a project of a competition we did not win. 
This is a beautiful villa in a small town between Ghent and Antwerp. It was a villa in a beautiful park and the city of Lokeren inherited it after the landlord or the landlady died like three decades ago. And as soon, they immediately decided to, to start a, 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 a music academy for children and it became a success. And I'm quite sure that the success of the music academy was related to the marvelous teachers, but I'm also sure that the romantic idea of the house and the park was part of it. The competition was about enhancing the building, let's say with twice the square meters as it is available right now, and a kind like same volumetry. We did a lot of ideas and sketches, but after a while we found that any extension of the new would not help too much and we got a little bit disappointed by the idea of the old towards the new as it classically go. And all of a sudden we look back to this photograph and what you see with me is a black pond and in the black pond you see the mirror of the villa. This became our proposal. You see here a picture springtime and you see in the trees twice the villa and another villa on the right side, which is a villa next to the park. But we compiled this photo to be the argument of saying, we think that this is a park of villas and it should be ever a park of villas. So we proposed a kind like idea of copy. On the other hand, we are not artists, we are architects, so we have to deal with program, with precision. And of course, whatever you, the idea you have, you have to fulfill the minus detail. On the other hand, you have to also understand the time you're living in. This villa was made by craftsmen, an economy of a certain time, something like you could not redo today. So we made an interpretation, a reinterpretation of the detail of the villa in a much more abstract way. And on the other hand, we also made a, a reinterpretation of the volumetry of the villa. And finally, this was a proposal. This is a photograph which has been taken on a late afternoon in the office when the sun comes over the volumetry. The mayor of the city asked to the jury if he had to pay us as for him we did not deliver any new concept at all. This was kind of preparation to go now to some real projects. This is a project for an office building. Our client bought himself an old abbey. Nevertheless, his idea or program was to have landscape offices. Uh, normally, if you have need that, you would not buy yourself an old abbey, but he did. So he asked, in fact, to take away all the walls, so it became one large space, uh, obviously, monumental services declined that idea. Nevertheless, he asked us to make it as open as possible. And while doing some pre-research, we found out that the walls, which were initially between the rooms and the corridor, were not original walls. So we could convince monumental services to take away the walls and to replace them by glazed facades. Glazed facades, which were are sometimes fixed and which are sometimes on a rail so you can move. We had to add also some reinforcements into the building as it was not in a stable condition. And then came to us the idea, what do we do with the perception of the new added elements in that, office, in that building? And of course, you start the research, you have aluminium framing, you have metal construction work, do you give it a color? Do you give it a contrast? Yes or not? And again, you arrive in this typical idea of the contrast of the old versus the new. But then we found out this, as we took away the wall, as we started to clean out the uh, walls in the rooms, we found out that each room had one particular color. And as easy as we found it, as easy we projected the color on the zone of each room towards the corridor. And all of a sudden, we believed we just found a very simple, easy, almost lazy idea to give the project its appearance as you see it right now. 
So the glazed walls, they do their work. They can be open, they can be closed, whatever you want. So the feeling of being connected is quite possible, although it's a building of rooms. And the old former doors, between some rooms, they were former doors, they can be used to just put it open and to make a continuation of space from one to the other room. But the main important message or idea for us was that we added not that few much more, only the things we could add by reading the building. And even when it count, came to a final idea of ambience and atmosphere, the colors were yet embedded in the building. Observation, as I said, is one of the main things that keeps me busy all the time as an architect. And maybe also it could be a form of laziness in the sense that you just have to read what you find and give it a slightly other interpretation and it might be fairly enough. Second project. This is a kind of painting we made. It's a mixed media painting. And what you see in the middle is a beautiful old, we call it, or they call it, our client calls it a villa in a park. This is a project about a psychiatric clinic. Keep on remembering, but I will come back on the picture, the white elements. This psychiatric clinic was found near to Ghent in the beginning of 19th century. And it was at that time quite revolutionary. And you can see here on this beautiful drawing what they did. For all the different diseases, they made different buildings and they spread them out in a new park. It was totally new at that time, but what was especially new was that this park was not a closed park, so that everyone still could walk in, walk out. Of course, visions on psychiatry and on whatever always changed. So throughout the years, they started to demolish different villas and to replace them by new buildings, mainly in the 60s, the 70s, the 80s and the 90s, which are buildings, you can read the plans, which are buildings which have typically this kind of hospital layout. And all those nice villas were about to vanish, of course, one can understand. Nowadays, regulations, they don't fit anymore in this beautiful old, although large-scale buildings called villas. When we arrived, uh, when uh, one and a half or two years ago, there arrived a new director. And when he arrived, they were at the point of demolishing this already completely and the demolishment of this one started. And the director, which was a young man of my age, he stopped the building site. And uh, he said, it's true, we can't do anything anymore regarding regulations, but imagine we could start from the building out and check out what we could do in a different way, inventing new spaces for new therapy. So he launched a competition, this one was demolished already, of this one was taken away, the roof was taken away, the roof, and he launched a mini competition between three practices, asking what they could do with the building for almost the same price as the demolishing itself. Secondly, he also asked to think about the unity of everything, not only about keeping the all one building, but also to find out an idea of unity of everything. And as we found in this building that there was a beautiful idea, although it was added later on of a kind of loggia, we started to make a kind of catalogue of possible loggias everywhere around, so that the people walking nowadays in the park, they could walk from one loggia to the other. So we made this catalogue, and as you can see, it was not such a very difficult exercise. It was just a way of observation and imagination, and we proposed to turn them in those kind of objects that could unite again or unite by architecture again, although different types of architecture, but although, on the other hand, uniting as previously all the old villas had in uniting architecture. This is what you also see on this picture. To compete, what was our proposal? The question was, well, probably you have to demolish more of the building, but how can you keep it as a ruin or whatever. 
We state in our proposal very close with the actual status of the building. And we proposed not to demolish too much further on. We made a large model to make it comprehensible, a kind of puppet house. And we went to the client with sketches provoking parts of floor you could take in a way. Later on, we became even more calm when we won the competition, but finally, based on our idea of processes and our idea of proposals of keeping straight tight to the building, we won it. And since J June last year, the building is open. These are photographs of the actual status. Still, it seems that it's ready for demolishment, but when come closer, sees all kind of details. Finally, we added seven new glazed rooms into the ruin. The building has no conditioning. It will be used in wintertime different than in summertime. It will be used in a different way as different people have different ideas of treatments. But we did everything to deliver seven rooms and also to do a good maintenance of the building. As here, yet a bulldozer drove through, starting up the demolishment, we restored it like this. And the doctors, somehow symbolic to me, they called it the healing of the building. We gift constructors schemes, not plans, not details. We gift some directions on site and we checked every week what happened. This is the idea of the greenhouses in it. They are at several levels. We took away some parts of the floor which were too much damaged. We took away all the natural material plasterwork from the walls so that nothing could be rotten. Also the ceilings. The metal beams were there, but we covered them with a good paint so they would not get rusty immediately. We took away the floor, so the floor becomes mineral as it's really an open park going in. We added some street lamps which are around on the park and, and, li and light the building at evening. One can enter the building always at any time. Those who live there, the doctors, the psychiatrists, you and your family, when you come around, everyone can enter the building and meet people. We took away the floor with the basement. We planted a tree next to another lamp. And then we made a kind of small auditorium. And sometimes they play movies or they have small talks with their patients. It is an open house now, and for them it's a very important symbol. It is an open house that on the other hand also reflect, and that's their symbols, a kind of life. And how life could be lived with all its small details and damages. That's what they say about it. In the old chimney, technical shafts of the heating, we made a fireplace. When we took away the wooden window sills on the, on the inside, there was some damage and we covered it with concrete and painted it later as a white cloud. We could manage it to do it in one year, even less between winning and between construction. It was also key for the director because of no one believed, of course, that this project could give any uh, merit towards the idea of finding buildings that might invite people to look in another way to psychiatry. Healing a baluster that disappeared. It brings me to a third project. It's a house of a client of us who bought himself a house, of which he told us that he bought him a concrete house as the floors were out of concrete and the walls were the same. But as we visited with him the house, we found out that the concrete blocks were of a minor quality and even the floors were pending from one side to the other side. So uh, where he was happy with the concrete, he was very unhappy when we left the house. Nevertheless, as a way of curing the house, I'm now in the same language, we proposed more concrete again. He could not believe. 
we proposed that any idea of change in the building we would, be, we would make visible with only one material, whether it would be a wall, closing doors, whether it would be a structure, opening doors, or whether it would be supporting the floors that were above us. Those are photographs from the construction site. The floor above was quite weak and we added two beams which were supported in the wall. And of course, we have to admit, it's not only about construction. We deliberately drew lines, on one hand a little bit naive, like saying when we take a floor in the middle, it's the best way. On the other hand, also just wanting to make beautiful drawings out of a patchwork of concrete blocks misused as beams, columns, and so on. Finally, the house became a white house, but every other history of the house came clear throughout the house. I have to accept when someone comments our works that a kind of idea of a graphical quality is very important to us. We often say that at the end, the house must look, must look somehow like a drawing. Small projects are amongst now larger scale projects I will show some later on. Still, what we really profoundly are interested in our practice. We believe that still practicing the small project, although economically it does not merit the office, the, the office uh, business plan. On the other hand, our small exercise that helps us to make large scale buildings difference. This is a small house in Antwerp and it's situated at a crossing of only two streets in a triangular way. That explains a little bit why this house has this strange knick. And this time, we are not responsible for the brickwork of the house. It's a house that has been bought by our client, and it has been built by a previous owner in the 60s or the 70s, I believe. And as you can see, the previous owner did not to care at all of the beautiful context of this old city, old street in the city, in the center of the city of Antwerp. The client bought it and the budget was not enough to change the whole house. So we decided with the client to only make half a house. But make the or take the occasion to go up so that at least some restoration of old lines of the city came back. On the other hand, by not making the other house, finding a way to add a very small internal patio garden and to add some trees, unexpectedly, some trees into the house. When we go up and the living room is above, you look outside over the city of Antwerp, but at the same time you see your tree. When you look down, you look into the old rooms of which we took away the concrete floors, but on the other hand, we kept enough floors so that they could act like beams to keep the facades together. And then we had to reinforce the floor as those trees are not really light trees. But as we had not enough space on the below floor to add some beams below, we pulled up the floor, going back to its origin of bringing the weight of the house down again. And we called it our own constructive trees. This is what you see. It was a triangle room as such. It had of no mean and today it has a totally other mean as it has this fantastic unexpected atmosphere of a picturesque small garden in the house. We built less house. On the other hand, we built more house as a garden was embedded. This is a drawing of a competition we won for the new offices of the province of East Flanders in Flanders, in Belgium. 
and it was one of the largest scaled projects we won, a job of 75 million euros. But then, as two years ago, a new government arrived in Flanders of another direction. They cancelled all the projects of the previous government. Anyway, this is a so-called conceptual drawing, but the funny thing about this drawing is that this was not the first drawing of the project, but the last drawing a collaborator made that night when we were printed, printing the booklets for the handover of the competition. But on the other hand, it framed completely what it was about. This is the old caserne in Ghent. So the province of East Flandern bought this complete set of old buildings. And they look old, but they are in fact very eclectical. And important to see is that none of the buildings is really connected. They are all separate buildings on behalf of some small wall connections. And the brief on the competition said that obviously, as they wanted to have one building with all the office services inside, obviously it was needed to demolish half the site to make place for the new building. As cities, eclectic buildings, and they were not yet immediately under monumental service interest. Of course, we understood, as it are separate buildings, that they had no imagination how they eventually could work together. And this was our proposal, what you see here. The proposal was a new bridge, which covered the new central space on the first level. And the idea is that this is the main building, and as soon as you're in the building, you take the staircase to the main level. And from there on, we call it the new main level, level number one, not the ground floor. And from that level, you could reach each other building, and immediately one floor higher and one floor lower, low, uh, lower. So we said, the idea is that by a simple bridge we can give you the idea of unity you are demanding in another way. And secondly, also this unity is quite functional as this is the main floor every day everyone works on. We were extremely happy winning a competition like this, in which nowadays rendering is the standard. We could win this competition by making those handmade drawings. This is the entrance. You see over the place, you see this bridge covering the place, and you see the staircases going up to go to this kind of small internal existing bridge to enter our main bridge. And when you are above, you look outside like this, see the green central area and understand totally the combination of all the buildings in one eye view immediately. We made several of those drawings and we entered and we were happy to win it in that sense. Something else about the, draw, about the building. Because also here the client expected landscape surfaces, landscape offices. This is again an observation. When we walked around in the old building at several times, we found this forms back. And we made a catalogue of it. Because this is a model of the interior of the building and once again it's a corridor. And normally this is a door going down and you had all rooms, only rooms with walls in between. As we needed to make landscape offices, we took away the walls, but we never took them away completely. We did everything that the walls could stay and that the walls could be like a head, still giving the idea of the old floor plan. On the other hand, a kind of endless perspective. And to do so, we added elements out the catalog as we found. A door became this form. The old window and the old door became catched by a beam, which was not exactly only a beam, but a kind of graphical element that came back out of the observation throughout the building. And this column was far too fat for what it needed to do. But on the other hand, it became an object rather than a column. Models and a concept we make together with Dorson Interior Architects, which have become a partner along 
since now many years and many projects. Back to a very small project we are about to deliver. It's almost finished. It's a typically Flemish context. More backyard houses than you have front houses, but the backyard houses are in the tradition of family, family living in Flanders even more important than the front houses. And you see here the front house of my client, which is very far away. This comes because one has an addition of rooms and rooms and rooms and rooms and rooms. What we did, we have also a very long garden here, I don't have a photograph of that. The last three rooms we gave back to the garden as a kind of garden rooms. We took away parts, we took away roofs, and soon there will be now a covering for a beautiful terrace. But on the other hand, I like to look with you with the interest of details, like we had also in this larger scale building, and the way we like to go on with situation, like here, cutting out a part of the former door, but leaving and finishing in a very precise way, or even keeping the kind of idea of the old door still being there. Finding out the line of the previous roof, filling it with white and understanding how the history of the building could be red again or red back. This will be a small internal garden room soon. Some things to be finished with a mirror, like those traces, and then a red cover of gravel. When we walk into the building, we walk backwards, you see, to viewpoint towards the garden. This was the wall and the chimney between this room and the next room. We opened the chimney. It becomes a viewpoint on the garden when you sit on your table. This is the old uh, storage next to the chimney. We keep open. And this is the way we worked with the construction. We did not replace the old beams, but we let fall out stones, restored it a little, and there one has the most natural beam, as you can see it. The old wooden blocks of the old door stays as a remembrance, and this is almost the finished status of the house. I walk with you to the above level, you remember the triangular windows from the facade, we pass by the old bathroom, of which we opened the floor so that below there would be a huge space above the table. And now we walk back towards the bathroom soon to come. We will keep the walls like this, we'll finish them, make them dust free, but love the traces or the additions we have in the building all along. The roof has been covered and has been well insulated because we are also technicians and the blue-green comes back from the blue-green plasterboard one has to use, but this time we, re we repainted it in the same fresh color. And light comes by an opening into the roof, downwards into the building. I look with you to the outside. The beautiful facade of rendering has been restored and the previously markage of so-called false stone has been restored again. But next to that we had to add new windows to make it better insulated. And as the old windows were beautifully varnished windows and they were in a pretty good condition, we didn't want to take them away to be simply replaced, but we covered the old openings with new windows. And one can see that every window has another color. Even every part of the window has another color. We did a survey in the house and we catalogued beautiful all old details, parts and colors in the house. And out of that catalog we derived for each room the typical colors available in that room, and we applied them to the windows. When today you are in front of the house, you will discover the extra, and this is nothing strange to you, I believe, double 
windows, but in Flanders it's almost revolutionary. And then the colors which one can find back into the room. This is a simple Flemish house. Well, it's not even Flanders, but now I have to explain. It's Edingen in Anguien. It's one of the cities, partly French, partly Flemish. Another small house. This is the way we found the house. And in fact, it's a beautiful old land house, you would call it. But in a bad status, as we found it, one wall was covered with this asbestos, but beautiful cement tiles, and it had its traces of time. And here was a loggia, a loggia which was almost closed completely. This is another viewpoint. The house had a lot of beautiness, and at the same time, a lot of beautiness was still hidden. When we documented on the house, the client came with this old picture. You can see the loggia in one of his more glorious outcomes decades ago. And you see here the wall which was covered with the cement tiles. And something strange was on the wall. There was a drawing which was a continuation of this loggia. We found or they gave us more pictures on that. The client asked us not to restore the whole house. It was merely an affair of facade and also an affair of restoring the loggia. And there was one more program to be added, and that was a kitchen. This is the result of the question. We made two new loggia houses. One which replaced the old one, and another which became the kitchen space. And the position of them was, of course, related to the position of the old one. At the same time, the position of the drawing on the wall. This is a situation which can be compared with the photograph. Today, plants start to grow up. But this is a situation as it is today. We made a kind of simple stackage as foundation and a simple detail to keep it all up. Although, on the other hand, we decided colors that day on the site when someone was wearing a yellow pant, we give it the color of yellow. And with the old facade, which was covered with the tiles, we made a beautiful kind of painted rendering and we redrew the idea of the old tiles upon the house, as it is a kind of unlayering of history of everything. And inside the house, light is entering like a loggia or a veranda always should do. The two verandas in the corner of the house really unfolds the house to the outside, to the beautiful garden, without needing to break open all the walls to make large windows. This idea of interest in the smallest detail of the history of the house is one of, let's say, my personal obsessions. This is another house in which we made a covering for a wall. And the wall embedded a beautiful old wall, but as we had to insulate it, we are architects, we are in technicians. We had to cover it again, but we didn't want to lose the idea of the beautiness of the wall and with the client a couple of weekends long we drew on the tiles before they were hung those lines and possibly when someone passes the house mostly no one will see it but at a certain point someone will see it this is a beautiful picture of Philippe Dujardin all pictures are of Philippe Dujardin he is a photographer artist that goes along with our work and I'm so thankful for him, for, I'm so thankful to him as he is covering our work so precisely. This is the house, in fact. It's a small house, a young couple inherited from the family. It's an old cafe, very known cafe for those who know something about cycling and who know something about uh, Ronde van Vlaanderen. It's at the start point of the Koppenberg, and it used to be one of the points. Uh, where everyone met on this special day in Flanders when the Ronde van Vlaanderen 
takes place. But they inherited from the family. It was no coffee anymore at that time. And they were far too young, in fact, for this heritage because they had no money to restore the house. It was far too big. They only had 90,000 euros. So we made a plan in which every investment in the house was about material investment and they could build it themselves. It took like three, four years and uh, every month, one Sunday afternoon, drinking hot choco milk together at the fireplace. We did not change the house as such. It has a beautiful history. Although, of course, at a certain point, you take the decision that the former attic, which was out of use, should be very useful for living in it. And we had to restore the roof anyway. So we had to add some windows. And the window is no more nor less than the copy of the trompe l'oeil of the first floor coming back in the roof. And then we mirrored out, so it became a new trompe l'oeil. As we were like, we did not want to change too much, or in fact almost nothing, to the house itself. Although a beautiful rat we found on the door was brought back on the door. And this is what we delivered them. We delivered them a kind of mechano system, which is based on what you all know, doka formwork, scaffolding together with greenhouse technology. It's a glazed house in the house that was what made us possible not to have to cover the whole house in insulation as we got this kind of idea that we get in between spaces which from sustainability part act completely different. We have double glazed now. This is the summer situation. But even when you are in the house, summer or winter, you always have the complete house. And if this is the line of the former old floor, we had to add an extra beam to keep all walls together, but we cast it or we formed, worked it with the former planks of the floor. On the other hand, one has now light in the house coming from the south, from the back of the house, all over the house. And of course, I could tell a lot of stories about sustainability, but finally the client wanted also to have a fire place, a type you know better than I, because it made life. And it is in the middle of the house, it's much more better than everywhere else, but technically seen, but I love more the position of the old chimneys and the new chimney looking to each other. Back to a larger scale building, it's a former townhouse in the city of Ghent. We delivered now half a year ago. Oh, sorry, almost a year, because we are May. And what you see is not what you get. You see a seemingly beautiful, large-scaled, classical building. But in fact, it is a facade, which has been glued, beginning 1900, upon five old houses. You don't see it. So the structure of the, of the complete project was in a very bad status. There was a competition, and the city of Ghent wanted to have this old townhouse of the city of Ledeberg, which became a district of the city of Ghent, wanted to have a district house with kind of administration, police services. But also there was something special. This part of the building is a small theater place. Honestly, I never understood when I arrived first time in the building that the building was still standing up as it was started from those old houses and they just broke away walls in between and I never understood the construction, how it kept all together. Nevertheless, when we won it, when we won it and we went back with the people of the city of Ghent, we asked the mayor to close it down immediately because Ledeberg is known for its carnival and Last, the year before, still 800 people jumped on the floors over there. Anyway, please keep in mind the next thing, that here is a theater place. This attic was not included in the building as we found, as you could not reach it. And also, see to this balcony and to this kind of small balusters that we moved upon as we added a new floor, of course. And this floor has a thickness of 60 centimeters. So we turned over the windows upside down and that's the small detail difference one can see. So this was the scheme. This was to be restored. 
ground floor. And this was the possibilities to, because the, yeah, I have to, to explain, the program they proposed was, in their opinion, far too large to get it done in the old building. So they proposed in a competition to add a new building. And this were possible schemes of the addition of the new building. So you see with me, if you would build one ground floor, the whole plot was filled. Even if you got to start stuck it, it was still a, quite a difference. We made a small analyze. This is the situation as we found it, the old buildings which were around. And this is what we proposed. In the building, there were a lot of unused levels. In between levels, but also the basement level as the attic level. And we started to puzzle and to reorganize a little bit the levels because finally we had to take all way, we had to take away all the floors and we were we were successful in bringing everything into the program this is what we did we added new floors in concrete as set and those new floors that got legs like tables columns and if you have a close look you will see that all those columns have a different size we asked the engineer to give every column the specific size so one could read which is the load-bearing capacity of the building at that very moment. And when we had to pass porticos of zones which are below these floors, we could have had the beams in the floor thickness but we brought it upon so they become ornaments into the space. And when we added the columns towards the metal beams which goes along with the table, we added small mirrors so also new ornaments could be found and the columns visually looked like running through the table. The same with the acoustical panels. Mirrors keeps on continuing and keeps on misleading the eye. But maybe I like to talk about such things in the building. We had to refurnish the building for 6 million euros only, which was almost no budget. And then we were facing at a certain moment in the building site, this kind of conditions. Badly poured concrete. The client, the city of Ghent, wanted that the um, contractor would remake it again. The contractor did not agree. The building sta site started to slow down and eventually they would find each other in a kind of juridical debate. We proposed something else. We said, like, what can we do if we would try to start up to read mistakes that comes along with the building? We called it a kind of reading of the building. And we started to paint everything that went wrong. We gave it an idea of red. It started, in fact, from the idea that this tube was placed wrongly by the contractor. And we saw this, and all of a sudden we added a new alphabet to the space. Later on, when a contractor hung its plan on the concrete and we said, you will have problems with your glue, he said, no, no, no. And two months later, all the glue traces were on it. But we couldn't mind because we found a way of getting along with it. And it got a kind of, let's say, own language because this was not particularly a fault, but it was meant to stand a little bit on the other side, but the users of it wanted to this side. So each occasion we could find, we took the red paint. And here even, honestly, the architect forgot in the tendering papers the covering of the rain pipes, so we made them red. We are the architects. And this became a kind of own story throughout the building. The green, what you see, came out of green that we discovered with the restoration. But each red moment is, in fact, a small story of change, fault, of whatever that came along. You're now here on the above floor, which is the police department. They're looking over the city. And the triangles that you saw into the roof were inspired by the classic triangle you saw on the facade. And we used it now as incisions for triangular patios, bringing in light all over the building. And honestly, this beam was not a mistake, but I thought it was beautiful, the rat, to have the rat over there. 
now they have a police department, open landscape offices, and we didn't have to add any new building to find place for that program because in the competition it was projected into the garden. And this is the beautiness of Philippe Dujardin's work. A reflection of a house standing in front and the rat that comes back. Not only we have to observe life, but also the photographer helps us to understand what observation can be. We walk now back below in the building. And here is red, for example, for fireproof elements we had to add in. It was not provided red, but all of a sudden it comes. And here we look back from in the building outside. We see again the complexity of the structure we adore. We just staple the things as they come to us and deliver a kind of fascinating atmosphere throughout the building. Another old place we had to keep. The point was that also in the building we had to keep some places as they were under interest of monumental services. And now we step out. The front building was a white facade and the back building was in fact a stackage of all kind of additional buildings we took away. But we had to keep one addition which is a kind of round, half round addition of a larger room in the building which is called the marriage room and we had to keep and that one we kept and as we were facing the uh, point that we had to add a lot of new staircases, elevators, evacuation staircases which were not in the building before and as we took away like about four meters of additional buildings of no qualities we could restore the old facade we gave more depth to the garden, in fact. On the other hand, we used the excuse of the volumetry of the old marriage room to add volumes there where we needed. And it delivered this kind of composition. Black glazed tiles, no different than the tiles originally on the rooftop. And then again, at the end where we were finishing the garden, some piece of wall that stayed there to keep the garden wall straight needed to be replaced by a column and we asked the constructor not to do it and keep the old wall. And of course you are in Belgium and Marguerite is always looking over our shoulders. To end up with the last large, I believe this is the last project I will show you on behalf of some additional small ideas. This is now one of the largest buildings we are working on. This is an old photograph of Charleroi, which is the French side of Belgium. And you see Charleroi had a huge heavy industry history. Those are the terrels, which are the result of the um, iron heavy metal industry. And in the 60s, the city of Charleroi built themselves a huge expo hall of 60,000 square meters over three levels. This is one level and you have two levels going down as we are at the slope side of the bill of the city. And uh, it was a competition we won and there was some documentation and we checked out ourselves more documentation and we stood still with this beautiful photograph of the building site moment in which the holes were, three level holes were almost finished and the in-between representative space which connect the holes and was a kind of huge entrance space was still under construction and showed itself here not as a closed block but as a kind of very ephemere open space. It's 60,000 square meters and there is only a budget of 30 million euros. One would expect more rather 90 million euros to make a full restoration of such an old building. So more pictures of the building site before it ever was built. You might understand now that it's a stackage of three layers. 
And this is our proposal. We passed now the demand for the building phase and we are working now on the execution files. And this is the model in which one situates the city of Charleroi, beautiful old uh, theater place. And this is the impact in the city center of this huge building. And our proposal is no more, no less than in fact what you saw on the photos of the construction site. We take away the facades and we deliver this space as a kind of new, open, urban park. By doing that, we did not, or we do not have to restore the whole building out of energet energetic uh, demands, because if you want to restore this, you have to insulate it nowadays, and this costs a lot of money, money which was not available. So, as in the beginning, the 60,000 square meters was very much needed for the heavy metal industry, but two years after delivery of the building, the whole metal industry collapsed and Charleroi became one of the poor, poorest cities or regions of Belgium. They did not never need any more 6,000 square meters. So we convinced in our competition proposal that we only would restore half a building, open this building to avoid the restoration and keep that building as a huge parking block. This is the recent model we presented to the politicians and they wanted to have their foire on it visible. And we descend now in the model closer to our intervention, which is only about revealing the structure as it once was during the building sites. And now one will cross from one to the other side in a new building, in a new public park which will be filled with trees and such designed by Denis Dujardin and will deliver this spectacular view all over the building. You will understand now even more the idea of the different levels which are available to give you... This is nine meters high, only one level. We are happy to make, to test our interest on this large scale building, you can guess, and we are looking forward to the opening in 2023. Still far away, but if you have to work on it today, we are super stressed on finishing all the things we have to finishing to go over to tendering. Where I started, I might like to end up this uh, small or long lecture. We make houses, we make buildings, we make projects, but we are also often invited in making pieces of furniture and such and objects. We gather them all along our projects, our, our processes we make. And this is a gallery we were invited in. And when you see the gallery, we came there first, typically gallery, wide, open space, nice, and you go two, three times back and you say like, something is missing. How will we show our objects, which is the orientation of the space we could not find out. And we thought that it was good to have four new columns. We proposed the gallerist to make four new concrete columns, but she didn't like the idea. So we had to make the decor of the columns. We made the decor with simple wooden plates, some uh, stamps inside to give tension, though they came on site, and then we painted them white. And in fact, in the beginning, a lot of people did not understand that something, they knew it was something was changed, but it could not find out. But finally to us, it delivered a much more equilibrium space. So we could place our objects in the middle and people could walk around. The same gallery, another room, in another part of a building which was next to it, there was this beautiful old room and it had traces of the work of Hannes van Severen and Finn Muller who were presenting their work previously to us. And they made these nice paintings on the wall and the gallerist said to us, don't worry, we're going to paint it white. And we said, can we keep them? We don't know them, but we can do other things with it. So we made a small cupboard for a bottle of wine. We made in the floor also kind of storage for your nicest jewelry. 
we made in another trace which was available over there and other small storage for books your children are not allowed to read. The idea of context and the idea of the smallest context ever always giving you an opportunity to do something. And we launched for the galleries that from then on this space would be called not the gallery but the cabinet of the gallery in which each other next invited artist or architect or designer, whatever, should leave a trace. This is the first project I ever made together with a friend, Patrick Moyersu. It's a drawing on checkered paper. And at that time, when I was young, we still had to glue this kind of typically rasters on it. And it was the first job we got. It's a white villa in the suburbs of Brussels, in the better suburbs of Brussels, with a beautiful park, a garden. And a young guy inherited it. And he invited us to give us a chance. He said, like, we have a huge budget. Well, we have had for us a huge budget at that time. And this young guy, although he was planning to stay alone for a longer time, he said the villa was too small and he wanted to enlarge the villa double size. We did not understood the issue. It was yet a quite large villa. The only thing we understood was that when we observed it, that the floor ceiling height was not that much. So we proposed with these four drawings to dig out the house out of the garden and to take away the floor between basement and ground floor and create a new ground floor level so that we found out a huge space and as the garden was fairly large enough, we could have a small, small, or a slow, slow slope towards the garden. We were only half an hour inside the house. The client kept on laughing and finally kicked us out. And then we lost, of course, the first major job of our life. But we both had a feeling we want something else. The next year, so we wouldn't get any job, not because of this, but because you are young. But it gave us a time to reflect on things and ideas. Three final slides on ideas, and then maybe I can, if you have still uh, time, we can run through those projects I will never not talk about. This is a work of an artist, Ante Timmermans, and it says the simple words. Maître en jeu, op het spel zetten. And they are very important for us. Maître en jeu, if you understand some French, means it's badly translated in daring to take risks. But it's more subtle than that. Anyway, I love this sentence very much. This is a sentence that comes from the Belgian artist Francis Alice living in Mexico City. And I phrased this in, a comp in my context, not in his context. Sometimes doing something poetic can become political, and sometimes doing something political can become poetic. I think architecture has much to do with that. And then the last point, which was finally the inspiration for the bus stop in Krombach. This is a drawing of Sol Lewitt that I photographed with an analog camera. It is a huge city palace, we call it, so a huge house with a porch entrance where the horses passed the centuries ago. And it was a gallery, and in that gallery once there was made a drawing by, not by, but a drawing of solo wit was made. And as the gallery left in the 90s, the house, it was sold to a new landlord who made 23 student studio in this beautiful old building by which it is now completely ruined nowadays. But anyway, at that moment he asked this electrician to install 23 doorbells and a light switch. Is it a murder on the art piece? I guess. At the same time, the electrician for sure never would have known who Louis was and what he was doing, but at the end, Lewitt decided or ordered the electrician where the lights which should arrive. It's that point which is very important for us. This kind of things that kept us so long, 
And then I don't know if you have still five more minutes. I just run through 100 slides without seeing anything. Except your bus stop, which is in fact a drawing of Sol Louis. We folded as we had to end in five days before we had to end in our proposal. We had no ideas and we went back in our monograph and at the first page we found a photograph and from a certain viewpoint it was like three-dimensional. So Inge cut out the drawing of Sol Lewitt. Jo folds it here towards a small bus stop and we send it in this movie of two minutes. There's our video stills out of it. And finally the bus stop became again a drawing of Sol Lewitt and we made the same fold as the electrician did. Now I say nothing for five minutes. And I'm even stopped <laughs> by the, you're saved right now, which is quite a pity as I wanted to show at the end, especially for Arno, some extra pictures, not of a work of us, but, sorry, can I try to solve this? Oh no, all the pictures are gone. This is really a pity. Ah, no. Ah, here it comes back. No, when I go ahead, but at the end, it's all corrupted. Mm -hmm. That's a pity. That's really a pity. I'm very sorry for this, but um, as Arno invited me today in this marvelous project for children. He made and he told me about the way they have been building it together with finding funding, working with students. Um, I was really emotional by it and I wanted to show him work of Lucien Kroll, which is called, maybe I can try to attach my computer, I don't know if we can solve it, which is a project of Lucien Kroll near to Brussels, student housing, which he built in the 60s, together also with, he calls it a participation project. And I just wanted to show it for Arno. If not Arno, I will show it to you in private <laughs> later on this evening. Uh, but uh, I, I don't think it, uh, uh, my computer uh, is here, but, mm. and, I have to have this this extra thing. Where is it? What do you need? Is it uh, HDMI? Okay. Sorry, that's a little bit. Uh, <laughs> ah, it's crude. Okay. I show you later on, or I will put a computer in and everyone can have a look at it. But anyway, um, thank you for all your, I don't know how long I've been talking, not too long I hope. Okay, thank you. One question, you're a part of a movement of uh, Flemish architecture. What is the reason why it's uh, the movement is now very strong and very special in the, because you're not only, you, you, want, you are one part of this movement. <laughs> mm, it's, it's difficult to give analyzes on that when you're middle in of it, of course. Um, but um, I think that it's be especially because it's not a movement. Uh, I think uh, often uh, they compare this kind of Flemish fake today with the Hollandish movement we had in the 80s and the 90s, the Super Dutch. But I think there is a main, main, main difference. I think the Super Dutch at that time wanted to be Super Dutch and no more, no less, and everyone was like 
going for the same thing and wanting to have be the same things and they were struggling one over the other to be the new Remcolas and Remcolas wanted to be the new Remcolas and they always wanted to be the new but at the fact they were always the same, almost. I think if you talk about the Flemish movement, it's not a blame, eh? it's, it's, it, I think it's a fact and I think uh, Rem himself to, uh, um, said at a certain point, I don't feel myself responsible for what happened in Holland and all the others that came after me. He said that at a certain moment. So the point is I think that in Flanders we don't have that movement. I think if people are interested in Flemish architecture, they will discover each other office to be different from the other. Not because they want to be different, because, but just because I think that all those offices in generally just want to do eager, good production in architecture. And then, thanks to the existence of the Vlaams Architecture Institute, the Flemish Architectural Institute, thanks to good publication, VEIC and all this, this came to a front. And maybe it came to a front in Europe where this kind of 1890s huge VEIC, also in France, this huge big offices, peop that's, people started to have questions with it. And then came this small, Flemish officers just doing their things and people looking over their shoulders and all of a sudden we were part of a debate. But I'm quite trustful to, the fact, to, to, to it that we will never arrive in this Dutchness which happened decades in front of us as we are not looking to express us as a Flemish vague. I think that's the chance and the power today of all the things that happens in Flanders is that they became young officers still wanting to be just making a good architectural production. But I think it's an observation of someone who is in the middle of it, so you cannot trust them. Now you're gonna see all my private documents first. And I hope my sons and daughters haven't sent me just something nasty. Okay, if you have time, I mean. So this is the part I will not say anything about. Maybe you should put out the light now. Oh, no, 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 no. Ah, I don't think we are at the right point in the, in the lecture right now. Sorry, I'm gonna start over again. Oh, yeah, okay. What's strange? Oh, it's the wrong lecture, sorry. <laughs> it's this one I need. Sorry, <laughs> I thought like we've, we've been through this. So you will have been looking at 290 slides by this evening. Here we were. Yep. A kindergarten in Brussels, next to a church and a street middle in. A larger scaled housing project in a beautiful park next to an abbey and the interest of finding ourselves away of the small ornament based on the analyze of the facades of the abbey. We call it a classical one, a villa around three trees, a villa in a small garden in which we did not cut any tree. As people buy this garden full of trees because they love it, come with a house and they demolish half of a drawing on a construction scheme for production studio of Le Balesse de la B and the drawing became the building itself. A veterinary clinic, no money to the building, everything to equipment and then still the last opportunities to make some details. Smaller scale refurnishments, smaller houses, pleasure of still making small additions to the Flemish history of backside building. 
electricity refurnishment. Or a shop in Ghent in which we took away floors to connect the different levels as the shop was the whole house. And the simple pleasure of making, because that's where it started for you, Inge and myself, understanding what craftsmanship could deliver. A very large scaled villa in an old square farmstead, and this is not a photo compilation of Philippe Dujardin, but the reality from a certain point more realistic, from further away, a huge intervention in a lot of old farm buildings, or a very small intervention in a garden. If you want to read more, you can go back to our book Bravoure, Scarcity Beauty, on the occasion of our Venice Biennale presentation in the Belgian Pavilion last year, on the art of craftsmanship in poor economical conditions, or the 2G you can't get anymore, recently the DI Dibus, but of our book sets of three books, texts and drawings, pictures, in which soon will be released the next three ones on our exhibition in ETH, and the next three ones on new projects to come. And finally in June now, a new monograph in A+, plus who will be available. But I'm going to quit what I quit. This is what I wanted to show to Arno. This is a project of a student housing project for the uh, French University in Brussels, ULB, built by Leon and Simone Kroll. It's a little bit like Louis and Francisca. Uh, artist. Weinberger, men and women together. And they made this housing project. Uh, why we went to there, Philippe Dujardin and I, as we were asked to give comment on the building, since there is a huge question now on the restoration of it. And the building has been made in a participation pro as a participation project in which everyone well, it's student housing, but it was more like apartments for young student couples and such, and everyone was allowed to say his say in the building process, by which it became a completely chaotic building and also a completely chaotic building process. But now, decades later on, they have to restore it, and there is no window which is the same like the other window. And it's one huge cold bridge, of course. But why I wanted to show it, because it was, again, this power that I learned with the project of Arno this afternoon, this power of people, in fact, who might be even not architects, wanting to deliver a kind of difference in what the world of architecture can deliver. Like one of the clients over there wanted to have a greenhouse, so the greenhouse arrived to happen to be part of the building. So I just, it's maybe of a total other order, at the same time it shares, I think, Projects like uh, Arno started up with you here in Innsbruck. This kind of testing with very local down to earth, although this is a totally other scheme, uh, scale, but the power of the debate, the power of just the power of doing it, and what it delivers after a while. Even one can say here that this power delivered beautiful details of architecture, the same as I discovered this afternoon in this beautiful small project, Arno, but not only Arno, I mean a lot of people here around um, the, building. Hmm? The, building. the building, but I'm uh, sorry, the lady must be also here that gave me a nice coffee this afternoon. Yeah, I forgot your name, I'm so bad in your... Yeah, I see you popping up there at the back. <laughs> so. Um, please, um, um, I was really touched by it and that's why I all of a sudden throw these pictures in this. Yes, I think at the end I dare to be pretentious and say uh, we share some things. Thank you.